समर वेकेशन का मतलब दिन भर फ्रेंड्स के साथ खेलना नानी के घर जाना और ढेर सारे मैंगोज खाना बट नॉट दिस टाइम द लॉकडाउन हैज नॉट जस्ट अफेक्टेड द लाइफ ऑफ अस एडल्ट बट ऑल्सो द बच्चा पार्टी to help parents and children deal with the lockdown and the new normal post lockdown ensense has invited a very special guest today dr sharmila kulkarni dr sharmila is a renowned pediatrician specialized in neonatal intensive care and is a director of sanjeevan hospital nasik she has a long list of international allocates in neonatal care and is the best go to person for a tiny new human thank you so much doctor for accepting our invitation and joining us on this podcast today thank you so much nidhi you have been very kind with your words to describe me thank you for calling me here on this platform i would love to talk to you and to the people who are facing this covid situation that's so humble of you thank you so much yeah you just said that the pachcha party are not having the summer vacation that they should have right but i'll tell you one thing even i am missing out on this summer vacation i am missing the mangoes i am missing <laughs> the mango ice cream we do and then i am missing all the treks we go uh, to and the vacation so it's not only the bachcha even we are missing this uh, summer vacation in fact in all my life i have never had this kind of days and summer vacation so definitely this lockdown is affecting all of us not only the bachcha but all the adults but i'll tell you one thing we have been patient we still have to continue being patient and we have to be tough because we know that tough people last but tough situations don't that was an awesome proverb i love that i would like to make Thank that you. my new mantra <laughs> <laughs> absolutely you just told me that to tell something about how to cope up so here i am going to tell you something very interesting Mm-hmm. you said bacche to bacche hote hai right but i would add to that i'll say that bacche to bacche hai but baap re baap because <laughs> it has been noticed do you know that a very interesting fact that it has been noticed in this lockdown that children have been more adaptable to this situation yes. than adults they have behaved more maturely they have behaved with more understanding and that is true it is the adults who have to learn how to cope up so i'm going to tell you some keys of how parents can cope up with this situation uh-huh. with themselves and of course in uh, with how to manage their kids in this situation right and these are the keys with which you are going to open and unlock your happiness and okay. be happy even in this post lockdown phase the new normal the first key and i feel that is very important is we should actually take care of our stress because your stress is going to reach out to the kids and they are going to be stressed out so the first point the first key is that we should manage our stress in a better way we should assess the situation we should be practical we should be responsible little bit of stress is normal and the second important point the key is to talk with your kids we have to open the communication channels with them we have to make them understand if you make i just said that people children are very understanding so make them understand about this lockdown why is it necessary why is it necessary to maintain a social distancing hand washing so if you explain to them they are going to be good as gold and the third important thing is that we have to set a routine in this lockdown children are not used to staying at home in the four walls set a routine for them and set a routine for yourself and follow the routine that makes things very very easy to take and of course as i said no stress so be positive be creative and make each day very very interesting the child will look forward to the next day you know one day just say okay this is going to be our cooking day so bake new dishes create some new new flavors and make it interesting so another day make it let's do a video we'll all dance and make a video so make each day interesting so that again is key to help children and a cope up with the situation another thing is involve all the family members especially the kids in the day to day activities involve them give them some responsibility you are cooking food ask them to cut the vegetables if they are in that age ask them to lay the table wash up the few utensils do the beds you know clean up their rooms so small small activities the children can 
help you in day-to-day -day activities. The most important thing is we are never going to have this so much time with, have we spent so much time with our kids? I have never spent so much time. So we are never going to get so much time with our kids. So take the opportunity in their hand. That is what I tell all my patients that make each day count and take this as an opportunity. Be with your family, be with your children and communicate with them. These are the different keys that I'm telling you how to cope with yourself. Use these keys and unlock your happiness. That's almost answering my first question. Awesome. Thank you. So this is an important message that each parent should understand. You said that we should engage kids. But then when people are working from home, so what happens is, so you are already stressed out, then how do you handle kids? You don't get that much of time with them, at least before you had a cut off with work. Now you don't. So, Absolutely. you know, there is this strain between where do you go? Do you work or do you go with your kids? And how do you just manage both? Right. So this is, a, I think, happening with every, each one of us. We are working more hours. In fact, many of my colleagues tell that because you're working from home, we are starting our work at nine o'clock and we are working till nine in the night. Yeah. So uh, what you say is right. As I said, uh, set a routine. Children understand. They are mature. Explain to them. Explain to them that you have, mommy is going to work. And that is a time, see that they also work at that time. Make a schooling for them. Mm -hmm. So you can say that nine to three is going to be our school. I'm going to work and you're going to work. So start of the day, make the buff for them and let them sit and work with them. But what is important, you have to take breaks. So suppose you're working for one hour, make your child sit next to you, ask them to do a drawing, do some colorful artwork. Diwali is going to come in a few months, make them do some greeting cards. So let them do some creative work. And every hour or so, see the attention span of a child is very less. So if you're working, let's say for half an hour, take a break. Take a tea break, make some lemonade, sharbat banao, play with the child for five minutes. It's a recess time. Yeah. Eat the bar with the child, go back to work. So this way, if you can work, take break, work, take break, that will really help us. So the child doesn't become irritable and the child realizes that both of us are working. So you have given importance to the mm -hmm. child too. So that will help you uh, work without getting disturbed. You know, this reminds me of something that my papa said. He used to wake up in the morning and he used to tell me, Yaar, I shayad he is going to work, but he used to always say that I have school to go to. Now I realize that probably that was intentional and it made uh, my school look as important as his work. And that yes, really works. Yes. That absolutely works. Yes. So this is important. Give them importance. Give their school importance. You are just doing something because they are busy. So that is the attitude which you, sh uh, you should have. So treat them like adults. So that will work. There is this irony that has happened. You know, but you have confused. Ho hai. Till now, we were like, bahar jao, phone mein mat raho, bahar ja ke khelo. And now we're like, bahar mat jana, ye lo phone, please bahar mat jana. This is not a right way of engaging kids because of course their screen times need to be limited. Overexposure to screen time is not good and less physical activity is not good either. So how do you gain uh, this balance? How do you help them be physically and mentally fit at the same time with the restrictions around, you know? Yeah, so I think uh, let me take it in two parts. The screen time, I think that is a very important, very alarming and very disturbing situation. Mm -hmm. We are asking the children to stay at home. Yeah. And then they are going to be on the uh, net. They are going to see the TV. They are going to be on the mobile and play some games. So actually, this is, the first thing is we need to accept that screen has become a part of our life. It is inevitable that they are going to be on their net or on their mobile for some time of the day. See, we are already having online schooling going on in India, right? Yeah. All schools have started working. So they are going to work online. They're going to be on the net. So this is inevitable. It is part of our life. Then once you accept it, then how to make it work to your advantage? That is important. So I always say, you cannot stop the screen time. 
Mm -hmm. So be with it. If Muhammad cannot come to the mountain, the mountain has to go to Muhammad. So what I, I always tell my patients, don't say no to screen, don't say no to net, but try to shift the child from only watching movies or playing games to doing something more productive with the net. So initially you be with the child when he's playing games on the mobile or on the net. The child will love it. Oh, my mom is playing games with me. So he's doing, he's on the net and his mom is with him. So he's having two happy events occurring with him. So be with him. You can pre-decide the movies that you want to see. So daily watch a small skit or a movie, something nice with the child can. So you can control. Thing is, I never had a TV in the bedroom. I don't have a net connection in the bedroom. So you keep these connections in a living room, somewhere where in the open space where you can monitor the child. And if this is there since before, then the child does not feel uh, as if you are encroaching him on his privacy. Mm. So you that, that way you can monitor what the child is seeing. That is the first thing. You can block some channels. I know that it is the need of the hour. A child, small child cannot see everything. So he needs to get this information gradually as he grows up. So blocks few channels, blocks few apps. You can do that. So that is the second. Third, you be with him. Now, in this lockdown, what did we do? My daughter doesn't stay with me. She's there working in a hospital. I get worried. So what I used to do is, we used to play games on the net. I played Pictionary with her. I played Ludo with her. And not only her, I involved her other cousins who are across the globe. Someone is in Pune, someone is in the US. So all of us together, we used to play games. What happened? You know, see my child is with the net she loves. She is with her parent. She's happy that her parents are involved and she's communicating with the cousins. You see, nowadays, today, children don't know their relations. Yeah. They don't know their cousins. So we are killing three birds with one stone, right? Yeah. So they know their relatives. They communicate with their cousins. So this, and then the child suddenly realized, oh, there's so much to do on the net, which I never did. I only played PUBG. I only played games. Yeah. Not the right thing. Uh, help them use apps which will teach them things, which will give them more knowledge. You know, so make productive use of the net, make songs, create videos, make skin. In fact, I learned a lot of networking and using the net from my son this time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to make a PowerPoint presentation. I didn't know how to edit videos. So in fact, it's just a give and take thing. He taught me so much and now I can use all the online things much more <laughs> confidently than I did. So this is how you can do it. That's so awesome, you know. We always hear people condemning the digital times for kids. But this is a better way of looking at it. Like, obviously you can't stop it. So why not make the best of it? Absolutely, that is it. But this is about kids who understand a few things. What about kids who are really young or just born? There are so many questions that parents have because you can't really make them wear masks or, you know, you can't really sanitize them completely. So how do you handle that? How do you handle their visits to the doctor? What should parents do? So here, both the parents and the doctors have to be responsible. Now, you're talking about wearing the mask. Children don't want to wear masks. Yeah. I just tell you, just yesterday, I had this small girl who came to my hospital and uh, you know what she told my receptionist? She said, auntie, ma mask upar kar do, nahi to corona ha jayega. <laughs> so you know, see how well the mother has taught her. Yeah. We, everyone knows the movie Shole. Everyone knows Gappar. So yeah. the mother must have explained to her in this beautiful way, nahi to Gappar ha jayega. <laughs> so, no, Karuna has got related to the Gabbar. She's yeah. scared of Gabbar. She's going to wear the mask and she's telling other people to do so. So in children who can understand, you can tell them in very simple uh, ways where they can understand and they will do it. Now talking about newborn babies. I agree. You cannot ask a newborn baby to wear the mask. But then here, the best thing is to isolate. Don't take them out. Initially, we stopped all well baby clinics. Mm -hmm. He only called people who are not well, children who are not mm -hmm. well. They were emergencies, you know. So we tried to triage the healthy children from the unhealthy children. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing. What we do in the hospitals now, I have, we do give vaccination because that is considered as an essential service by WHO. 
So we cannot stop vaccination. Do you know that in the last pandemic, the vaccine preventable disease is really odd. So we cannot stop vaccination. Then what can we do? So we kept a few days for vaccine. That day, that few hours, say one OPD timing, mm -hmm. we only call the vaccine babies. These are the healthy babies, they come for vaccine. And then we have only one patient at the time in the waiting room. The other patients are waiting in the car. So we gave them slots. Uh -huh. So only 15 minutes slots. So the patient comes in, straight comes to the OPDs and our consulting rooms, we give them a vaccine and they are home. That's really insightful because it's really difficult to handle newborn babies in even the normal world. I think this is the best time for the new mothers, you know. Mm -hmm. See, they had to stay at home with the babies. But the husbands too are staying with them and helping yes. them. The kids too are staying. So in fact, for them, it is a win-win situation. They are getting Absolutely. help from their people. The husband is helping out with the other kids. So it's a nice time for them. Yeah, luckily everybody got a parental leave. <laughs> Absolutely. So always, I always take some, uh, po something positive from any situation which may not be good. That is how it should be. Absolutely. So one of our listeners came up with this one question of with, who has a daughter who's four year old. Uh, so she asked us, uh, what about, you know, we have a building which is already quarantined and we, we have these kids in the building and they want to play. So they do come. You can't restrict them really. They so sweetly come and ask you. And then they have these tiny masks and gloves on. So they are really taking care. But at the end of the day, the danger is still there. What precautions do you take when you're trying to help them play? The first thing is hand wash. Mm -hmm. We have to teach children, not only in this COVID time, mm -hmm. but do you know that Indians always ask children whenever they came from outside yes. to wash their hands, wash their feet. I have realized we hold your hands mm -hmm. and not shake hands. So these are small, small things which we have been doing in India. Yes. You know, so as a child, whenever I came from play, my mother always used to tell me, go wash your hands and mm -hmm. feet, then come and pray in front of God. So we always had this holistic approach, you know, and uh, so just continue doing that. That is one. As you said, children want to go out and play. So they are mature. Make them understand that they cannot go out because if they go out and play with kids, their kids are playing with their, uh, someone else and we can spread Corona in the society. So in fact, just a few days back, I saw two, they were little older kids. They were playing ball. One, bo one boy was throwing a ball from his balcony into the other <laughs> balcony and they were exchanging balls. Of course, with their parents there, you know, we were taking care that they were playing safe. So they are very innovative. So we should find out innovative ways. In fact, you talked about some physical games in the house. Play with them. That is something. See, this is the Corona times. Children are staying at home. So there are no activities. There's no movement. And plus, they're eating all the time because there's nothing yeah. more to do. So, you know, they are going to put on weight. They're going to become unfit. So here is something which that play comes. You make play with the child. Have dance uh, sessions. There's so many uh, videos on uh, YouTube where you dance with them. The father, the mother, the kid, children, even if there's a grandfather or grandmother, all are dancing to the tune of some lovely, you know, bouncy music. So you can dance with them, have some physical activities, have some workout sessions with them. So you have, they are a bundle of energy. You have to just channelize this energy and work out with them. Yoga, yoga is very important. Teach, this is the time to teach them yoga. They see their grandfather doing pranayam. They see you can do Surya Namaskar. One of the best exercises helps tone the whole body. So involve them in such playful activities where some physical workout is there. And that way then they will not miss playing. And I think that will also give them a lot of emotional and mental balance as well. Yeah. So this emotional uh, well-being is very important that emotion and mental health is very very important as we just said that children are very restless they are used to be see they go to school then they go to some classes then they play so nearly eight to ten hours in the day they are used to being outside and suddenly now they have blocked and caught in this four walls of the home so they are going to be restless they are going to be irritable. They are going to throw some tantrums. They are going to have some fights. Especially teenage, they are used to go out and have a party with their friends. So they are going to have this, you know, a lot uh, of in in fightings. They are going to have headaches. So we have to be basically very patient with them. We have to show empathy. 
that is very important. We have to look uh, at the situation from their perspective. And if we do that, we'll understand that these children need emotional support. They need mental uh, support for their well-being. That is So maintaining communication with them, these communication channels, you know, being there for them, talking to them, this is, you have to tell them that they understand their plight. We understand them, but we have to bear with it. You know, it's a small period. We have to bear with it. And sleep is very important. If they sleep well, they're going to be happier. Exercise, as I said, this will release the endorphins. You know, that is the make, feel good hormone good in your health. body. Yeah. So that is going to make them feel happy. Another thing, you know, teachers play a very important role mm -hmm. in their life. So connect. Call up a teacher, make your child talk to the teacher. That will help. That will, you know, settle him down. They need their friends. We don't realize it, but they need their friends. So uh, ask them to have video chat chats with their friends. All this is going to work and keep them mentally happy. Make them feel important and some responsibilities. I asked my son to plant a sapling. And I said over the next two months, just take care of the sapling. So they feel they're important. They feel they have been given some very important responsibility in mm -hmm. their family. So they are not some, you know, ye to bachcha hai. No, they are important part of the family. So make them realize that. And this will really help in taking care of their emotional and mental well-being. It's so important that each aspect of their inner and growing circles play equal and important role in their mental stability and their mental growth and in these times it's so important to keep those dots connected even if it's virtually you know ye to bachon ki baat ho gayi bachon ki baat easy bhi hoti hai thodi because wo bahut zyada resilient hote hain lekin hum adults itne resilient nahi hote hain to samajh mein nahi aata hai ki kaise apni anxiety se uh, you know deal kiya jaye what you told was not only for kids it was also for us to some extent which i really thank you for because this advice will surely help our listeners to have a very good time with their children and not stress out about this whole situation and the new normal but to put all your worries aside and to answer all your questions that you are going to have for your anxieties we have another special guest that is going to come in our next episode so stay tuned until then stay home stay safe and keep the child within you alive.